Hello fellow murderers, today is Saturday, April 20th, 2024, and it's a great day to solve murder. Today we have the challenging case of the no longer living greens keeper, and we have six 4x4 grids of suspects, motives, locations, and weapons. If you're a fan of the Myrtle books like I am, uh, we've got Myrtle Volume 1 here, Myrtle Volume 2, and I believe only 10 days to go or so until Myrtle Volume 3 is on my doorstep. I pre-ordered it months ago, so I'm very excited. Anyway, if you're a fan of the books as well, this is a classic impossible puzzle, but don't worry, I'm here to walk you through it so that we can all get a successful solve today. So as always with these impossible puzzles, we do have statement clues. So we have four suspects, so we have four statements. And of course, one of them is the liar, and whomever is the liar is our murderer today. The other three must be telling the truth. So we will go through our statements and figure out who the murderer is using those. But let's first meet our suspects. We have Deacon Verdigree, Principal Applegreen, Coach Raspberry, and Chef Aubergine. Our weapons are a magnifying glass, a golf club, a sack full of golf balls, and a bottle of wine. The locations are the men's lounge, the tennis courts, the 18th hole, and the pool. And the motives are to hide an affair, to fight for the revolution, to see what it felt like to kill, and to escape blackmail. I feel like I haven't seen escape blackmail in a while, so that's cool. All right, I'm going to flip back to suspects, and then let's dive into our clues and evidence. All right, we've got a fingerprint clue right from the jump. So we, okay, this is Principal Applegreen. This is like a very distinctive mark here, and you can see it here as well. So Principal Applegreen was found in the men's lounge. Okay, Principal Applegreen in the men's lounge. All right. A lightweight weapon was found at the pool. So let's go through our weapons and see what was lightweight. Not the magnifying glass. Huh. The magnifying glass is not lightweight, but the golf club is. Okay. And the golf club is the only light that... Okay, this is again where you can't let outside information or knowledge come in and influence how you're thinking about this. If it says the golf club is the white lightweight weapon, the golf club is the lightweight weapon. So we're just gonna put any thoughts about that aside and say that the golf club was at the swimming pool as it's the only lightweight weapon. So we mark that in weapons locations here. Let's cross it off. The suspect who wanted to escape blackmail had a weapon made at least partially of glass. So I think that's either going to be the magnifying glass or the bottle of wine. So let's see, we've got escape blackmail and I'm gonna put question marks for these two. I'm gonna cross off the golf club and the sack full of golf balls. And that also means that the person who wanted to escape blackmail was not at the swimming pool. So we can cross off that location for that um, particular motive as well. Okay, we have an anagram. This one feels like, I don't know if I'm just getting too good anagrams, but this feels like it's barely scrambled. The person with the magnifying glass wanted to fight for the revolution. True Vanel. Okay, I like that. <laughs> okay, person with the magnifying glass wanted to fight for the revolution. So, that means we can also answer this and say that the person who wanted to escape blackmail had the bottle of wine. That's because the magnifying glass was the other weapon made partially of glass. And of course that is now assigned to the motive of wanting to fight for the revolution. That also means that the magnifying glass was, let's see, not in the swimming pool. We already have that, but then also that this motive to fight for the revolution was not at the swimming pool. I think that's all we've got for now. Okay, and we have one more motive and uh, location. The person who wanted to see what it felt like to kill was on the tennis courts. So we'll go here, tennis courts, and see what it felt like to kill. Okay, now there is some more we can deduce from this. Um, we know that the person who wanted to see what it felt like to kill was not in the swimming pool. Um, because they were on the tennis courts. So we can mark that off. And that means that the person with the sack full of golf balls had the motive to see what it felt like to kill. And the person who was at the swimming pool wanted to hide the affair. So we have that information now. 
And let's see, is there anything else? We can put this here as well. I think. Oh, and here we go. We've got this one here too. Okay, so we've got four left in each of these. That seems about right. And we don't know anything about the suspects and their weapons other than Principal Applegreen, but we do have his location. Um, does that... Do we have the location? No. Could be the magnifying glass, could be the bottle of wine. So it could be either of these motives still. So I'm not going to fill that in. It's too many maybes right now. So I think that's what we're working with. All right. I sometimes imagine somebody watching these videos and like screaming at me that I'm missing something obvious. So be sure to tell me. I love it when people are like, you missed this. <laughs> like that's really helpful because it's awesome to hear how other people think about the puzzle and everything. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I flip these over just to make it clear. I'm hitting the save button um, and that will allow us to reset our grid using this recycling button um, to this state so we can come back and try out a few different things as we go through our statement clues. All right, so as I go through the statements, what I typically do is I go through, see if there's anything that must be true or must be false based on what we've already found. And then I go one by one, assuming each person is the liar and testing that out with the other three or two, depending on the size of the puzzle, needing to be true based on that. And that usually helps me eliminate a few things at the top or find things right away. Um, and that allows me to kind of narrow down the possibilities that we're working with. So. Let's go ahead and start off with seeing if there's anything obvious that we need to cross off or note right away. Magnifying glass on the 18th hole. That's possible. Okay. Coach Raspberry bringing a golf club. That's also possible. We have very little information about the suspects and the weapons. Magnifying glass on, ooh, okay. So these two are in contradiction with one another. So magnifying glass on the 18th hole, magnifying glass on the tennis courts. So one of these two must be a lie because these two cannot both be true as they both pertain to the location of the magnifying glass. All right, so this also means that the magnifying glass was either on the tennis courts or the 18th hole. And you know what? We, oh no, oh no, we already solved it, okay. So wait a minute, we've already got this as the bag of golf balls on the tennis courts. So friends, we've already solved this puzzle. Deacon Vertigree is our murderer today. I'm putting that in. All right, so I'm, I'm saying this is it. I'm saying this is the lie because we know that the magnifying glass can't be on the tennis courts because we've already found that the bag of golf club or but. I keep saying bag of golf clubs. The bag of golf balls was on the tennis courts. So Principal Applegreen is telling the truth that the magnifying glass was on the 18th hole. And that gives us Principal Applegreen's weapon as the bottle of wine. And so we can do this. And again, that's because that put the bottle of wine in the men's lounge where we know Principal Applegreen was. And we know that Principal Applegreen's motive then was to escape blackmail. So there's at least one suspect all filled out there. Principal Applegreen is good. All right, so let's figure out the others from these. And we're going to just assume these are true because this cannot be true. Coach Raspberry brought a golf club. All right. It's a yes for Coach Raspberry. The golf club motive was to hide an affair. All right, and the golf club location was the swimming pool. All right, and Deacon Verdigree is our liar. How much do we know about Deacon Verdigree? Not a lot yet, but we'll figure that out. All right, Deacon Verdigree was not on the 18th hole, so that puts Deacon Verdigree on the tennis courts. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, these aren't these don't always go hand in hand like this, but we do see um, Deacon Verdigree trying to put something else at the tennis courts. So tennis courts with Deacon Verdigree, that's the sack full of golf balls. And that gives Chef Aubergine the magnifying glass on the 18th hole. So we'll mark that in. And so Deacon Verdigree's motive was to see what it felt like to kill. And all right, just right, I'll just take one extra second and fill this piece out just because it's driving me crazy to leave it empty. All right. 
There's the full grid. All right, so we've got Deacon Verdigree with a sack full of golf balls on the tennis courts to see what it felt like to kill. And again, we were able to get there because we saw that this could not be true based on what we had already found in our clues and evidence. And that wasn't necessarily um, as they were presented to us, but that was in the auxiliary clues um, and findings that we were able to deduce from the existing clues. And if that felt a little tricky, I do have a tutorial video on using the detective's notebook to build out those auxiliary clues. So be sure to check that out next if you wanna learn more about how you can find those types of solves. So let's go ahead and make our accusation. We've got Deacon Verdigree with a sack full of golf balls on the tennis courts to see what it felt like to kill. Let's go ahead and see if we were right. All right, we were right. Thanks so much for playing along with me today. I hope this was a helpful walkthrough and we'll see you tomorrow.